so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I am Michael fucking Rainey here with Cal Donjala. Hey, Mike. Hey, everybody. Jacob from Matera. Hey, hey. Jeff Simmons. Guys, what better way to kick off Dictator Month than uh, with a special dictator based request? Than dressing like M. Bison. Is <laughs> <laughs> the M stand for Michael? It does. Michael Bison. Related to that, I would like to make a very simple request of the each of the each of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit me. I would like uh, both of you to refrain from calling me Mike for this episode. Okay, and I would like the two of you to refer to me as my African warlord name. I one hundred percent do not want to hear this, oh. General Dookie Matata. <laughs> you can call me General Dookie for short. I will not be calling you anything for short. It's going to be Dookie Matata. <laughs> General Dookie Matata. Out of you, soldier. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, General du- Dukes. I was actually furious when I walked in this room. And neither one of them stood up to greet an officer. That is kind of fucked up. You're right. At, I'll it, do the rest of the episode standing as a result. Thank you, John. Truly insane that I walk into this fucking room with all of these ribbons that I've earned. Do you know what they mean? Uh, I do. Uh, this one was a pie eating contest. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like there's still some whipped cream on it. Yeah, this I, one, I call stolen valor right there. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I saved a dog. Uh, a dog was bitten by a snake, and I sucked the venom out of his penis. <laughs> this one, is he for, was bitten on the leg. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> this one is for genocide. There, every every ribbon has a story, and I could go on and on about my accolades. <laughs> But I would rather talk about y'all accolades. And I ain't talking about the car. John, would you care to flip your coin to determine whether or not we're doing Do an Impractical Jokers episode? Go in there. Or if we're going to get to talk about... What happened? Did we have a glitch with the Boeing repairman? Do we have an errant Boeing? Oh, no. I'll deal with it. It's fine. Let's go with it. All right. Well, hey, we got it under control now. <laughs> Jeff was in an N word. I sure hope not. <laughs> Why do we have that in there? <laughs> he put it on Remember, there like I seven months guys, ago. I asked you guys, Man, you guys want some sound effects? And then anything Jim Carrey's ever said, John had me programmed into this thing. We have like three channels of <laughs> random sounds. Yeah. Uh, this should be like the presidential <laughs> briefcase that they carry around. <laughs> like, you need, like, two people to acknowledge it. It needs to be opened. <laughs> All right. All right, flip that coin, buddy. Okay. I feel like my odds are at the best when you are dressed like an asshole. Thank you. Oh, I want to talk about Joe. You son of a bitch. Jake, did we win it again? <sighs> we won it, I baby. Feel like we won it again, Jake. <sighs> okay. Tell us about I should your watch new... that stuff in your outfit. Uh, we have a special guy. I became aware of this man in 2006 when they made a movie about him. And I learned a shit ton about him in the past week. And, uh, man, I, I can't say enough about the man. I'm talking about Idi Amin, former president of Uganda. Okay, I know the name. And then you're talking about, uh, what what movie was it? Uh, Last King of Scotland. Last King of Scotland. It was and, a title uh, that he bestowed upon himself. Okay, that really threw me for a loop. Oh, like Jagged. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's Africa's Jagged. Yeah, the last Jagged of Tennessee. <laughs> he was also known as the Butcher of Uganda, and I like this one a lot. He also liked when people referred to him as Big Daddy. I mean, who doesn't? Yeah, it's hard not to like yeah. a guy like that. I got to tell you this other name that he bestowed upon himself, because I have yet to come across one like it. He also liked to be referred to as... His Excellency, President for Life, Field Marshal, Al Haj, Doctor, Idi Amin, Dada, VC, DSO, MC, Lord of All Beasts of the Earth and Fishes of the Sea, and Conqueror of the British Empire in Africa in general and Uganda in particular. Mr. President, we are unable to fit all that on your license plate. Can you please shorten it <laughs> to Duki Matata? <laughs> this fucking guy, man. I mean, ruthless, no doubt. 
But boy, did he do a lot of fun stuff. Okay, hit us with the fun stuff, and then obviously yeah. ruin our night after that. All right, I'll give you something innocuous. Uh, he loved Tom and Jerry. Love it. Yeah. This guy was an Classic. old fella, I imagine, right? He was. When was he born? Mid-20s. His birth date, uh, his exact birth date is unknown. Love it. Yeah, a little mystery about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he loved Tom and Jerry. He loved the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, who doesn't? I mean, so far, it's all the shit I grew up two, with and yeah. loved. I would think, though, he would be a Washington Generals man, considering how high up in the military he was. <laughs> I mean, dude, you can't take <clears throat> L's every fucking game and still wear the jersey, you know? Yeah. Also, I like this about him. He loved KFC. Really? They have KFC in Uganda? No, in, in Saudi Arabia they had it. He had to travel for it. Yeah. I like that. I know. I travel, it's so hard I travel not to like food. it. Yeah. And get this, Jake. He had somewhere between 30 and 60 children. He yeah. doesn't even know if it's an amount or double that amount. He does not. It's, Dude, he had uh, he had six wives, an outrageous number of mistresses. Damn. And uh, it does seem as though he might have been stricken with syphilis to the point where it may have affected his mental state. He stay boinging. <laughs> We be boinging. And you might not like this about him, Uh-oh. but uh, his fourth wife was dismembered and then was found pieced back together. Like a vase? Or like a Frankenstein? Uh, my impression was more Frankenstein-y. Um, the cops came, he's like, it's a lie! <laughs> <laughs> Please! <laughs> I just found her like this, all right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ, that is disturbing. He was, does he seem responsible? No doubt. Yeah, he was a big torture guy. There's something in this book uh, uh, that I read entitled uh, Idi Amin, the story of Africa's icon of evil, evil by Mark Leopold. There was something in here that really cracked me up about his childhood. He was born in northern Uganda. Very big for his age, so he stood out above the other kids. And at that point, like, he was able to uh, to lord his size over the other kids, and that's where he, I think he developed the lust for power. But uh, get this. This is in regards to how he would treat other children who wronged him. And I quote, In the sundown hours of play, he would overcome any opposition by simply grasping his opponent's genitals and crushing them in his great bear paw of hand. Jesus. Man, the confidence it took to pull that move on the playground. As a kid? <laughs> yeah, if you were like, dude, it's either it's either that or I get my ass kicked. Yeah. And it's like, there's a little bit of respect coming your way from me. That is the worst. If you have the balls to squeeze balls. <laughs> you ever squeeze balls? I I must have at some point. Jake, you remember any? I, I don't think so. I think maybe inadvertently... Uh, during wrestling, hitting someone in the balls yeah. to try to get out of something. Trying to get out of a foam pit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is the African version of release, though, I hear. <laughs> Squeezing the balls, you have to say the, one, two, three, four, you're in jail now. Uncle. <laughs> have you had your balls squeezed is the question. Me, myself, personally, as a person? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't think I want to either. No, you don't want to, Jake. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, I've had my fucking nuts squeezed, brother. I've lived a life. I'm going to tell you this, too. This just popped into my head. This is something I read about his torture methods. One of the things that he would do to torture dissidents would be he would tie their fingers together with string over, like, a um, a beam. And uh, he would pull, they would pull on the string to the point where they would have to stand up. Now, as they stand up, they'd be in pain because they would also have a brick uh, tied to their scrotums. Oh my god! So as they raised up out of their chair, the brick would drop. That is a very creative way of torture, and I feel like he could have used that creativity in a more positive way. <laughs> it's African Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just Daniel Stern going cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> I made my dissidents disappear. <laughs> that is an Asian dictator. <laughs> But, John, I felt bad for him uh, when I read this. He only went to school until fourth grade. So he was not an educated man. People often clowned him for being a buffoon. Yeah, did he, I mean, damn, was he a dummy? I will say this. He would, he would give about three speeches a day. He would travel constantly. When he came into power, he was working like 14 hours a day, and he would travel around, and he just liked to give speeches. I think part of it was he liked practicing his English. 
Okay. And uh, I can admire somebody that, you know, isn't well-versed in a specific language, but they want to practice in front of people as well. Mm, and people would, cl- people would often clown him for not knowing what specific words meant, but I've listened to his speeches. Like, I just view it as somebody who's learning the language. I don't think he's a dummy. Yeah. He's trying to figure out my context clues. Yeah. <laughs> off of people's faces. <laughs> like... <laughs> There is one. I is, kinda, is hot dog renaissance a phrase that works? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I did feel for him. There was there was one that I saw where people people were kind of clowning him, and then I think he could tell that they were clowning him, so he started laughing along with them. Hmm. That's scary. It is, yeah. and especially like when you find out how many people he ended up killing. He he killed anywhere on the low end, eighty thousand Ugandans. No on, on the high end, a half a million Ugandans. Get As a result of here. his orders. Personally and his orders. So he, he started... can't kill 800,000 or fucking Not, not all those fucking people, yeah. of course. However, he the would take part in these things. Yeah. He first started engaging in torture. Well, I mean, the childhood ball yanking stuff, I guess, would count as torture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, that was childhood? That was childhood. Oh, oh no, not my. the brick thing. The just oh the, yeah, 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 just just a just, just the, a pulling them like a uh, step door one knocker. of uh, yeah. of <laughs> before you before print. you can even know how to tie a knot around a scrotum, you got to start by yanking <laughs> the on them. Blue em. ball print. <laughs> uh, this ribbon is actually for scrotum oh. not tying. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So sure would like to see that before the end of the episode. <laughs> Now, when he was traveling, giving these speeches, practicing English, was it just in Uganda or was he traveling all throughout Africa? Now, here's the deal, man. That's a great question, John. I like the way your brain thinks. He uh, he was a man that was, he really wanted to, to get international support for all the different shit that he was doing. Mm-hmm. Initially, I'll get to this. I, actually, I just want to mention a couple other things before I get into that. Okay. In 1946, he joined the British Colonial Army and he was part of a regiment called the King's African Rifles. And he quickly grew a reputation for being ruthless. He would get shit done, and he would rise up the ranks. Initially, he was like a fucking assistant cook. But then he was put into more and more positions of power. That's cool. It it is pretty neat. Yeah. However, he would often abuse that power, and he was known for being ruthless. And, uh, oh, dude, one of the things that that struck me as funny was uh, there was a prime minister, Milton Obote, guy was prime minister of uganda in the uh, 60s when fucking uh when idi amin eventually rose through the ranks and in 1962 uganda gained its independence from the united kingdom yeah uh the guy that i just mentioned abote he became prime minister and idi amin became commander of the ugandan army so he was a big fucking deal all right And one of the things that he was tasked with by the prime minister was to curtail the uh, cattle rustling. So they had a big problem with cattle being stolen. How do you think he remedied that problem? Tying bricks to the cow's genitals to keep them in place. He killed all the cows. No. When people were caught stealing cattle, they would have their dicks cut off. Oh, my God. Whoa. That's a... That's a heinous crime right there. Trying to I'd, see I'd rather be an heinous crime, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you want back there. But leave me full up here. Uh, another way that he would torture people, <laughs> dick-related, was he would cut their dick off, and then he would shove their dick in their mouth to the point where they would end up choking on it. I was going to say, are these people dying? Are they bleeding out after their dick cuts, gets cut off, or do they probably burn them? Right? What did you just say? Burns it, like stamps it. I don't the- know how they did it. However, yeah, you have to pee through a fucking uh, uh, scab for weeks, dude. Oh the, my god, I can't even imagine. That. The article that I read regarding the dick cutting off and the shoving in the mouth specifically referred to suffocation from having it shoved in your mouth. So I, this is not for no cattle. <laughs> Sorry, it might have been for the cattle shit. But then he also had a torture chamber, and this may have been one of the methods in the torture chamber. Although, hopefully, that's for a, a higher crime than cattle oh theft to god. get it. To get it shoved into your mouth. After. There wasn't a lot. Anybody that he perceived as a threat to him, which oftentimes were prominent people in Uganda, like doctors, lawyers, judges, they would often just be rounded up off the street and just brought to these to this torture chamber. Dude, the torture chamber shit's nuts. How's he getting in beef with doctors? Like he, um, I think he was threatened by anybody that was well educated, because there's two significant things which you think. You might tie into that. That's one of them, which is rounding up all these people. These might be people too. Yeah. 
who might have outside influence, which which may affect his plans. Uh-huh. Then the other one was, uh, I'll get to that one later. I'm, there, I have so yeah. much to tell you guys. I'm so excited by this, man. This so Take insane. a breath. He's, he's got like a wall full of dicks for torture. Count your accolades. The smaller ones, the bigger ones. Which one you said was your size? Which one? Because that one's going in your mouth. Before we move on from oh, that no. dick choking thing, do you guys think that you have enough dick to choke on? It depends on how I'm swinging. Fresh out of the shower. Yeah, and you're in cho- Africa, so you that. got that extra bird meat heat. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, how small is the mouth? How tight are my jeans? <laughs> how long have I been walking? <laughs> What's the temp? <laughs> Humidity? Can we yeah. have a barometer check? Yes. Oh, ha- did we just get out of a pool? <laughs> Has it rained recently? <laughs> Do you think you'd start humoring, humoring yourself like your wife does? Like, oh my God. Oh, oh, oh my God. I'm terrible. Yeah. This is definitely the biggest There's one There's no room for on. a second hand. Get it out of there. <laughs> I feel like post shower bird is the biggest bird. Yes. That's you know, when I'm there's a little looking bit of good and feeling out. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I could helicopter with that yeah. bitch. Yeah. And then as soon as the underwear on, I get saran wrapped again. <laughs> <laughs> Who smushed my sandwich? <laughs> Jake sneaking pee pee and Jays. <laughs> Did you just sit on this? <laughs> Will you sit on this? <laughs> I like the way you think, you perverts. <laughs> But uh, the Prime Minister, Milton Abote, and Idi Amin are working in conjunction with one another. And one of the things, they're, uh, they're both corrupt. One of the things that they're pushing toward is to push the Ugandan president, which is a fellow named President Kabaka, out of power. Eventually, they're able to, to exile him. So now... <laughs> that guy? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, it's, it's him. He's got a little sash that he wears. <laughs> so President Kabaka is exiled, and at this point... Abote and Idi Amin, they're in cahoots. Uh-huh. So they're the top two dogs in Uganda. Eventually, though, in the this early other guy's not going to make it to the end, I can tell. <laughs> no. But, dude, more importantly, eventually in 1971, there's a rift between Prime Minister Abote and Idi Amin, Jake. I knew that was coming. Yep. Damn. And I can imagine only one, there's only room for one Highlander in well, this Ugandan. So I, uh, while <laughs> you, you got to be kidding me, did you? Really? <laughs> yes, I was hoping somebody would go there. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for letting us be the first. <laughs> um, while Prime Minister Abote is in Singapore, Idi Amin decides to stage a coup. So he stages a coup, and Prime Minister Obote is not well liked by the Ugandan people. At this stage of the game, the Idi Amin's reputation really um really isn't what it eventually becomes to the ugandan people and he he presents himself as a man of the people he says that um once he's in power he's going to only have power until things are stable okay. he says once once the country has stability he's going to hand over the power to the people and that includes full transparency with what the ugandan army is doing okay and then also he's going to make sure ensure that there are fair elections so i am uh i'm picturing here a little bit of a campaigning lies where uh he later names himself president forever yes <laughs> <laughs> it's like day one in yeah. office you motherfucker yeah. you fucking got us yeah when you sit down at his desk he's just got like a, a little placard that's actually this fucking big <laughs> <laughs> is Edie a guy's name because it's confusing the shit out of me yeah, yeah. Well, you got, you got Falco in the guys. brain. Yeah, I, I keep thinking of Travolta when he announced the winner of uh, the gr- lady from Frozen when when she oh. won the Adele Dazim. <laughs> Idina M- Menzel. Yeah, yeah. Idina. You're Man- closer Man- than either Manziel. of them. Yeah. Johnny Manzel, Yes, <laughs> we were both wrong. <laughs> Mr. Football saying, "Let it go." <laughs> yeah, but this is kind of crazy. So initially, he has support from uh, all these powerful nations. Like uh, two of the more prominent nations are Great Britain and Israel. In what decade? So this is the early 70s. He's in power from 1971 to 1979. So it is, is Great Britain still looking at him as like a great colonial uh, army officer at this point? He still has that kind of reputation with them? So um, they, they have an up and down relationship with Great Britain. Okay. Um, there's still open lines of communication and they have interest in Europe. Uh, one funny thing that he does is he communicates directly with Queen Elizabeth II uh, he explicitly asked, can I rule Britain? 
<laughs> God damn. You know what? Awesome. You never know until you ask. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Worst you can say is no, yeah. buddy. Yes. Get in there. Ask her to dance. Yeah, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. And eventually she's either ignoring his letters <laughs> or she's just explicitly saying no. And in one of his letters to her, he says, If you want to see a real man come to Uganda. God damn, Whoa. dude. Was the queen looking all right in the Surely, 70s? <laughs> Shortly after she visited Uganda, too, which is crazy. <laughs> the earliest I could picture her as naked gun queen. Same, yeah. So she's she's all right. She ain't Wait, no Martha. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, my God. That wasn't picture. the queen in Naked Gun. Yeah, Queen Elizabeth II. She's not in the movie. Well, it's no, the lady no. that looks okay. exactly right. her like sister. she's supposed to. You guys could have really had me go in there for a Jesus minute. Jesus Christ, Jake. Don't tell us that. Should I, need the, I need the helmet. I was just thinking about giving it to you a few minutes ago, yeah, honestly. Can, you look good in it. Yeah, thank you. I look like a soldier for the Dookie Matata <laughs> Army. <laughs> General Dookie, continue. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. At ease. Eventually, Israel cuts ties with him, and they're responsible for building a lot of the infrastructure in Uganda. So they bail on these construction projects. She's like, all right, fuck. I need money, and I need resources. He reaches out to uh, Libyan leader uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Okay. He's another stinker. Yeah, mm-hmm. famous. Gaddafi gives him $25 million, which this is fucking 1972. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Awesome. Yeah, imagine how much awesome fucking money that money. is. And uh, what did he do with that? And I'm guessing it wasn't infrastructure improvements. He was a baller. <laughs> he liked balling out. He liked fast cars. He loved shopping, too. This guy's a fucking Replaced bitch. all the street lights <laughs> with black lights. <laughs> In 1972, there's a failed coup to oust him from power, Jake. Okay. That's got to yep. be a lot of the numbers of dead people in that. Yes. Now, at this point, like, he's ramping up the fucking mass murder. Yeah. People are just being yanked up off the street. Eventually, he builds his own torture chamber. You could actually visit this fucking torture chamber today. Wow. It was initially built as an armory, but it was just like, ah, we don't, you know, we, we're not going to use this for yeah. for our weapons. Actually, all the bullets are over in that room, so why don't we check this one out? <laughs> Dude, it's a terrifying place. Uh, I watched a... Um, a GoPro video of somebody walking down there today. It's chilling to watch this fucking place. So they have to sneak the footage. Like no, no, no. Okay. Like, is it like a museum now, dude? It, it's There's outside. A shop. It's outside. There's safaris that will take you there. That's insane. And when you go there, holy shit! Yeah, that's it. So there's five separate cells, and they're they look to be the size of like a fucking garage. Each one, dude. The first couple of pictures shows up. There's handprints of blood all over the wall, dude. So what they would do is, um, they would uh. They were protect, protected by electric gates, and then also there was a pool of water in that little walkway there. So if they tried to jump out and run out of that tunnel, <gasps> they would be electrocuted. Jesus Christ, man. They really thought of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking up where <laughs> The place Uganda looks like is. it needs running water and electric, and they just, like, undid it to just Dude, it, it was fucked. Uh I was reading an article about, um, oh, fuck, who, who was it? Um, who reports on torture? There's an organization. I can't remember. Uh, PETA? <laughs> pizza? Yes. Pizza, yes. Pizza, pizza. The Torture uh, Tribune. All right, I'll think of it later. Okay. I probably won't. I didn't know there was the AP. Is and Uganda is a pretty small country. But, Jake, there's a report which details this torture. And in this report, they say yeah. a uh, some of the things that some of the oh, prisoners... It's the Committee Against Torture. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> the World Organization Against Jeff Torture? Jeff just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you do HTML very quickly. But, dude, people that were held there that were able to eventually get out of there, they said some of the shit that they would do was um, they would feed you maybe twice a week. They would often feed you porridge with fucking maggots in it. Ugh. Would case, you eat it? Would you eat it? Yeah, though? I, I would. If I would, Jake, you'd be surprised at what <laughs> I get smiling. to. Smiling? I'm, I'm, I mean, no, I'm not smiling. I just, I would eat it. You're licking your lips, is what you're doing, <laughs> Jake. In addition to this, they said sometimes they would give them a sort of stew, which would be piping hot, but they would not give them bowls, so they'd have to put <gasps> out their hands. Oh my! Get the fuck God, out, of here. dude! Everything is torture. Everything's is fucked up. Terrible. It doesn't end there, John. They would be deprived of water for so long that one prisoner said that men would be begging other men to piss in their mouths. 
Yeah, I mean, that's like day four of not having water. Mike, that sounds like you're oasis there, buddy. <laughs> that's my water wall, Jake. <laughs> well, I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now, but I want your piss, bro. <laughs> Please. Pissing away in a Ugandan torture chamber. <laughs> Looking for a guy's balls I can squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say that they're known for low main. But I know. You know why I said that? I, I have no clue. Because we're getting into Asian persecution next. Okay. It was a foreshadowing. Ah. It was a number foreshadowing, if you will. But Jake, in uh, <laughs> so eventually he kicks upwards of eighty thousand Asians out of the country, and mostly these are people uh, of Indian descent. Okay, just gives them the boot. How do you do that? You take them to the border and just say, "Get out of here." He or? gives them ninety days to get out of the country, and he says the reason for this was that he had a dream where God came to him and said that these people are deliberately going to tank the economy. However, what he didn't realize was how vital these Asian people were to the Ugandan economy. Yeah, it's 80,000 people spending money. It does. And most of them own businesses. They own farmland. So all that just fucking goes away. So the Ugandan economy collapses because he kicks all these fucking people out. Mm, sounds like he's got a pretty stupid God. Yeah. <laughs> Your helmet all right, buddy? No, oh, it's, it's I always, tighter. I always worry about you when you got that chin strapped. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because we beg you to take it. Off. I insist. It's it gets tighter as as the episode goes. In 1973, Great Britain and Israel cut ties. However, they do have support from the Soviet Union. So you got to get support from the Soviet Union, mainly because they have political interest in Tanzania, which borders Uganda. Did not know that. Who's in charge of uh, Soviet Union in that point? I don't know. So I also I don't know. Drago. Stalin. Drago. Oh, is it still Stalin? My brain's no. Stalin right now, trying to think of this person's <laughs> name. So let's settle on that. <laughs> oh, it's Lenoid Ledlik Brezhnev. Oh, Leonid Brezhnev. I see your ass. I know your ass was in power. Okay, Leonid. Live from December 06 to November 82. How could I forget? Right on the tip of my tongue. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> This is exciting. In 1976, Idi Amin was thrust into the middle of a major uh, political event. There was a hijacking. And the hijacked plane ended up ended up in a uh, Ugandan airport. Wait, is this Argo? That that hijacking? No. No, oh, okay. Uh, this, this incident, um, there was a flight that was leaving from Tel Aviv to Paris. And it contained, the flight contained mostly Israeli citizens. It was hijacked by two Palestinian fellows and two Germans as well. And the purpose of the hijacking was for Palestinian interest. And eventually the plane ended up at this airport called Entebbe Airport in Uganda. Once it gets to the airport, the people are let off the plane and they're kept inside uh, one of the terminals. <clears throat> and the, the, um, the Palestinians are negotiating. However... Israel is, is they quickly spring into action and they're on their way to, to liberate these people. However, Idi Amin injects himself into the, middle, into the middle of this and he's constantly trying to reassure the people saying, look, this is going to be over soon. Yeah. Don't worry about it. We're going to take care of things. You're safe here. Let it go. Yeah. Idina Menzel. Yeah. Uh, yes. I could not let that go. Um, do you think her and Johnny Menzel have ever met? Probably brother, sister. Oh, you watch those videos too? What videos? <laughs> so there's 246 passengers on board, John. And they are allowed off the plane when it lands. They are. Yeah. So they're in the airport, the Entebbe Airport. While they're in there, um, the uh, Israelis eventually show up and <clears throat> they rescue most of these hostages. There's a woman named, one of the woman, women that don't make it out is this older woman named Dora Block. She ends up choking on a chicken bone. While they're being held captive. That's the worst way to go. Okay. 
what were the other reasons people didn't make it out? Some people on a banana peel. <laughs> Anvil accidentally yeah. fell. <laughs> Most of the people were rescued. However, this particular woman, Dora Block, lost because she was choking on a chicken bone. She was taken to a Ugandan hospital. And Idi Amin felt like such a fucking dickhead for this backfiring because uh, he was working in conjunction with the Palestinians that were that were that hijacked this fucking plane. Okay. Because he felt like such a dickhead, he had this woman who choked on the chicken bone executed at the hospital. Wait, what? So she survived the choking on the chicken bone and then was executed? Yes. She was executed at the hospital, and there were nurses and doctors that tried to intervene. They were also executed. Oh, my God. They swore an oath to keep people alive. It wasn't like a... Was it KFC? Because you said he liked KFC. I wasn't sure if he was providing that KFC. That is a pretty good question. It may have been, but either way, Jake, she kicked the bucket. He was ready for it. He's always ready for it. He's always ready for it. <laughs> well, that is uh, a shame yes. and completely insane and unhinged. This guy is officially on my shit list. Yeah, he's really turning bad for me now, too, Jake. I don't like that kind of stuff, man. You just you think you got a new lease on life, you know, you near death experience. Like, oh my god, I tell you one thing: I'm always going to take chicken off the bone moving <laughs> forward. And then, oh hey, Edie, a mean, and then yeah, lights out. Yeah, he puts the mean in Edie, a mean, and she puts <laughs> the eat in Edie, a mean. So you can see it's it's serendipitous <laughs> that they cross paths. I forgot to mention that Edie, a mean, Edie, a mean was a uh, an admitted cannibal. What? There's no evidence that he did this, but he say when he would personally kill somebody, he would take a chunk of their flesh to eat, to strip them of their powers. <laughs> they're, already, they're already dead. We are deep into this episode. Yeah, Cannibalism just shows. Forget about that. Oh, yeah. One small fact I forgot. He eats people, too. I would also like to add that he was 6'4", 230 pounds. At Damn, one point, he was... body as me. At one point, he was the Ugandan heavyweight boxing champion. What? Yeah. At what point? Well, I think when he was in the army. Yeah. Which you said it was the African Rifles, National African Rifle. The King's African Rifles. What a cool name. It is cool. Yeah. It sounds like it should be our motorcycle club. There's a bunch of images of Idi Amin, and then there's also an image of Trump and of uh, the Queen. She's got a cool hat, too. Yeah. That hat is rock. And turn that upside down, put some chicken in that bitch. <laughs> and then choke on it. <laughs> the queen or the hat? <laughs> Dude, imagine eating. <laughs> imagine like you're a butler in fucking Buckingham Palace and you walk in to bring her her, her fucking noon tea and the queen is getting chicken eaten out of her pussy. <laughs> Please do let me know when you're finished. <laughs> It's where the KFC bowl was invented. <laughs> Jake, in 1978, the vice president, a fellow by the name of Mustafa Adrisi, is chased out of office. He's stripped of his power. He flees to Tanzania, which borders Uganda. Idi Amin is furious at this fucking guy, and he's still trying to hunt him down, even though this guy's already gone into another country. And in trying to hunt this fucking guy down, Idi Amin's forces have invaded Tanzania, which is perceived as an act of war. So he accidentally invades another country. Man. Whoa. And they're getting their ass beat. He has a proposition for the Tanzanian president. What do you think his proposition is on how to settle this? Let me rule Tanzania. How do you think he wants to do it? Co-ruler. No. A winner take all. Boxing match. Yeah. He challenges the Tanzanian president, Julius Nereri, to a boxing match. No way. That is the coolest way to rule a country. Yeah, that is badass. I think all presidential candidates should have to do this. <laughs> it is kind of cool, but the Tanzanian president doesn't even acknowledge his request. So uh, fucking Idi Amin sends him another letter saying, listen, man, I love you. He's like, honestly, if you were a woman, I would consider marrying you. However, you have too much gray hair for my taste. (laughs) 
So, Jake, he's getting to the end of his run here. Yeah, he really is a stinker, man. He's a little bad boy. Yeah. Oh, dude, one of the things that he would do, all right, one way that they would dispose of bodies is the Nile River was rife with crocodiles. There's also dead bodies. They don't. They weren't throwing living people in. Oh, the, brother. Oh, God. Um, Have I've read Peter Pan. No, I wasn't allowed. It was a combination. So that was one way that they, they would dig mass graves, but then they would also just toss bodies into the Nile River and into this uh, Lake Victoria, which I think is on the southeast border of Uganda. I would not expect a Lake Victoria in Uganda. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Doesn't it sound nice? I mean, it would be nice regardless, but yeah. Mm. Seems more of like a British lake. I'm sure it was named for the queen. Ah. Is, is her name Victoria? One of them was. Uh, Jake, that one was of one of the Spice Girls. Victorian era. Queen Victoria <laughs> Valancourt. You know that song where she's like, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want? <laughs> yeah. She wanted a lake named after her. Oh, uh, okay. Lake Sporty. But, Jake, they would throw people into this lake, and uh, it was estimated that 4,000 disabled people were dumped into the lake and eaten by crocodiles. Alive. Jake, do you think they sold the wheelchairs for scrap? <laughs> I hope not. Why was he fucking throwing disabled people in there? What did they do to him? I guess they were a problem. In what way? Burdens? Com yeah, complaining about steps? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking demanding more ramps and elevators? <laughs> Could you imagine how crude Access their wheelchairs were, John? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Maybe, remember when I said the Israelis bailed on the infrastructure? Maybe they were building ramps. Maybe. Oh, my God. There was a crocodile who became famous. There was a crocodile, I'm not going to tell you his name yet, I want you to try to guess this, but there was a crocodile who was caught, who uh, people said that, like, people viewed this crocodile as a mythical creature. He was massive. He was fucking 16 feet long, and when he was captured, he that's was- 2,500 pounds. That's a big, that's a big guy, a croc. Brother, he was estimated to be 75 years old when they caught his ass. Whoa. When they finally caught him, they used uh, fucking cow lungs to catch him. Damn. They used cow lungs as bait. They caught him. They got him in the back of the truck. People were fucking cheering in the streets. And Jake, guess what they did with this killer croc who was rumored to be one of like the main beneficiaries of all the people that were dumped into the waterways there. Please tell me they made him a clock in the middle of town. Hmm. No. He was bought by a company called Ugandan Crocs Limited. Uganda Crocs Limited, they make handbags. Not shoes? No. Well, um, they probably get shoes, too. So maybe a little belt with the leftovers? That would make sense. But, dude. Hey, how many gator bags oh, you get out of that guy? God. Not him. They were using him to fuck other crocodiles. They were studded him? They were studying they this live? crocodile. They were studying this crocodile out. So they can have big, fat crocodiles and make a bunch of big purchases. fat boys yeah. living yeah. to 75. Mm -hmm. I wonder how mature you let a gator live you to. Because you, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you got to let it reach full maturity to mm -hmm. get the most bags you could out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Most bag for your buck. I forgot to mention this earlier. Remember I mentioned the uh, cow dick cutting offs? Yes. Um, God, there's been so much that's happened in this episode. That there has. A year ago. Do you think when you have your dick cut off for stealing a cow, it counts as mutilation? I thought it would be more castration. <laughs> I like that one too. <laughs> that one is good. Well, I like mutilation. I let's let the chat decide. Chat, <laughs> do you like mutilation or castration? Um, Jeff, he thinks the chat's going on. Could you just <laughs> type into a word document <laughs> whatever Jake said? <laughs> I'm teasing. They like Jake's better. Yeah, I like mutilation. <laughs> Oh, Jake. <laughs> he wants to cut my dick off. <laughs> <laughs> but, Jake, I mentioned um, he accidentally invades Tanzania. At this point, they're not having this. Tanzania was like, fuck this shit, man. Yeah. So they're going to take care of his ass. People are tired of him. People are terrified of him. He's just been scooping up people off the streets for close to a decade now. 
just killing people left and right. And he's doing this in Tanzania as well, or he just crossed the line and they were like, ah, breach contract. I, I don't doubt yeah, that he okay. did him and his guys. His guys were fucking ruthless. They were yeah. known for fucking all kinds of fucked up shit aside from murders. Just they would just break into homes and sexually assault people and yeah. they'd eat everything you had in the cupboard too. Just a giant stinker parade. Yeah. Just the worst of the worst, Jake. I'd keep my cupboard locked. Where, where, I mean, what if they uh, held you a machete point and said, where's the key, fucker? Yeah, because they got into the house, no problem. But the cupboard's going to give him some fucking trouble. <laughs> you can take my dick, but you can't take my Belveda. <laughs> no, not my cheese at Snackers. <laughs> oh, man. Definitely not my not. Oreo puff cakes. <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah, they're new on the grocer's uh, market, what? and no, I got to check them out. No. Don't tell me that. I can't. I don't need to know about these food. Do you, ha- do you have a grocery store open tonight? I think, uh, I think we got one nearby that's open. Do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's take a little road trip after this. Try these little cakesters out. In April, April 11th, 1979, the capital of Uganda, Kampala, is overtaken, and it's captured by Tanzanian people. Really? They came over They don't fuck around. Yeah. They actually chase Idi Amin out of fucking Uganda. Is it their army or is it just like citizens who become rebels? No, it's the army. Okay. So the army comes to get his ass and they're just like, fuck this shit. They chase him out of there. Initially, Idi Amin flees to Libya so he can chill with his buddy, Muammar Gaddafi. After a while, Gaddafi's like, uh, you know, what's the old saying? After four days, both fish and visitors stink. Uh Yeah. I think it was a little bit of that. Really? But he was crashing with him and, like, staying safe there. He was with him, yeah. Sleeping yeah. on his couch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just eating all the damn Oreo cakesters out of the cupboard. It's like J.B. Smoove on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Just like, yeah. Damn, can I be? Damn, I'm going to go back inside. They bounce him? <laughs> you got long balls, Edie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's actually what Edie means in Swahili. <laughs> Swawana. <laughs> Swahili. You know the shoes? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah, see? laughs> That was such a delay. Dude, uh, took me a second. I am pretty stupid. <laughs> Dude, Swahilis are, spe- are specially designed for fucking ripping shit up on dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Just giant mud tires come out. <laughs> Kids just calling their mom a bitch because she won't give him water. Where's he going? Where is he going now? I can go anywhere I want on my Swahili's. <laughs> but Jake, he's chased out of there. He initially flees to Libya, and after a while, Gaddafi's like, "Look, man, you got to get the fuck out." What year are we in now? This is 1979. Okay. He eventually ends up in Saudi Arabia. He's got some buddies over there. They take care of him. They put him up. Uh, they actually give him, like, a monthly stipend. I forget what the number was. It wasn't a ton, but it was, it was enough to, as to where, like, he could still do what he wanted to do. So he basically fled with nothing. Like, his uh, kids he took with him. But he doesn't have, like, access to his money. Wait, There's no way to, like... 30 he, or 60 kids came with him? I don't know how many of the fucking <laughs> okay, 60 yeah. came with him, but a lot of his kids did. Had to rent a damn Greyhound for that <laughs> flea. There's there's one of his kids. Uh, one of his kids... Flees on a Greyhound, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like that, that makes sense. One of his sons named Jafar... He's given interviews and has spoken about what it was like having to just leave in the fucking middle of the night and get the fuck out of there. There was, oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, they, has, they must have left on a plane if they went yeah. to Libya, right? Yeah. They got so to the they, airport and got out. Actually, no, well, Libya's also in Africa. I guess it it's pretty the, far. Though. Yeah, it's, it's like I would thousands imagine he, of miles, he flew, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But, um, oh, yeah, um, his son Jafar, when he's talking about uh, about his father and having to escape... Uh, you really get a, a good understanding for for what the guy was and how fucked up it must have been for these kids. And uh, he talks about meeting his dad for the first time in one of these interviews. And Jafar says he was about four years old and he met his dad. His dad was 45. He walked in and he was supposed to have dinner with his dad. He didn't meet his dad up until walking into the fucking dining room and seeing Whoa. Idi Amin sitting at the end of the table. He said he, he just remembers being very intimidated by him and his dad, without even looking up from his meal yelling at him to sit down and start eating. And the kid sits down, he starts eating, and as soon as he starts chewing, he starts choking. And he realizes that, like, what he's eating is just so incredibly hot. And Idi Amin burst out laughing because he had the cook douse the son's chicken in hot sauce. 
That's a prank. It is. You're you're on hot ones when you're four years old. <laughs> you got him to do. Wow. He was only four. He was four when he met his dad. Oh my god, dude. They what would talk an about inappropriate yet yeah, still pretty funny sauce. prank. In regards to the pranks, uh, Jafar says one of the pranks that his dad liked to pull was that Edie enjoyed chasing people with a spear. <laughs> I would, I would probably cry. Not only would he chase you with knowing the spear. that this guy kills at will, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. I would like. I don't even know if I'd be able to run with confidence. I feel like I would just cr- crawl into a ball and just start crying. It's tough, man, because he he'd like to have a good time. Yeah, and then he'd That's, be cracking up, you know, mm-hmm. and I'd be in fear for my life because guys like that can just turn on a fucking yeah. dime. The spear thing is the most relatable thing I've heard so far. Because like as a kid, I would oh, chase yeah. people with the pool skimmer. <laughs> and I would try to go after him. Yeah, a spear kind of is like uh, an African water noodle. <laughs> but dude, he would chase people but with don't spears. Don't dig it into a pool thinking you're going <laughs> to float, okay? He would chase people with the spear and then he would launch it at their feet. <gasps> Jesus Christ. So you might potentially be losing a foot in this yes. game. Dude, there's a documentary from like 1972 or 1974 that just... Shows different sides to Idi Amin, and one very funny part shows him having a swim race in his pool. He's in the pool racing? He's in the pool. He's he's racing what looked to be teenagers or young men. It was another uh, dictator from another country. <laughs> Pink slips run the line. <laughs> We're getting wet. <laughs> Shucky ducky quack quack. They were filming pool runnings. Now, who who was doing this documentary? Did he pay to have it done? I don't know if he paid to have it done. Um, it wasn't like PBS went over there and were like, can we fucking do a day in the life Ten of... Burns. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know if he sanctioned it or if it was his idea or if mm-hmm. somebody was just like, hey, Edie, because he, he, did, he was a narcissist. So yeah. I think anything that painted him in a positive light... He would be down for right. it. And he claimed that he was incredible at all these, all these different endeavors. Um, he claimed to be an incredible swimmer. They show him swimming. He does not. He looks like he can barely stay afloat. <laughs> dude, he's racing in this one scene from the, the documentary. He's swimming against like five other dudes in this pool. And they're just going from one side of the pool to the other. And as he's swimming, he's going, he's cutting off at like a 45 degree angle. <laughs> so and he barely nudges out one guy who looks like he didn't understand that like you kind of have to let him win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say nobody there's the other swimmers don't just stop and wait for him to pass. Almost all except one of them do. And this one guy, thankfully he nudges this guy out and Edie throws his hands up and he says, I win. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Jeff's watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> I think you pulled up the video. Is this him actually swimming in the documentary? No, that's a stuck step dictator. <laughs> yeah, that's him. That's this. Oh is, my God. Damn. He, he looks okay. He got a nice little dad bod on him. Damn, that looks like they are having a fun day at the uh, pool, though. Yeah, that's a pretty kick. He's in the middle lane, and oh, oh, now he's going going. astray. Yep. He's going astray. Got the other one. Got him. (laughs) And look, he barely beat that fucking guy. And that does not look like uh, good form. By a nose. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, you got my ass. Man, that is not the kind of property I was picturing, honestly. That's beautiful. Nice. Yeah, it looks really fucking nice. Like a scene from Entourage. Yeah, this is in 79 or the 80s. This footage is incredible. Dude, he look, yeah, look at it. He looks cool. How many people did he kill? <laughs> <laughs> you can't stay mad at this guy. <laughs> oh, dude, one funny You have a couple common accolades as him, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, he's got... And you also have the one for uh, giving hot sauce to a, a person too young to taste it. I did, yes. Yeah. <laughs> my, my son's tongue still isn't right. One other very funny thing about him, Jake, is he would eat upwards of 40 oranges a day. Oh, my God. What is he, combating scurvy? No, he uh, felt as though the orange oranges uh, gave him sexual vitality. Like that? Well, he did okay. produce a lot of kids from that. But that acidity will rot your right. teeth. Yeah? So the acidity it was an issue. Uh, I, I don't know for sure that it was an issue, but I have to assume that it led to some health problems for him. And eventually, he ends up um, he ends up having kidney failure. You said he had syphilis? It wasn't confirmed. Okay. Does that kill but people? people close to him, it, it can affect your uh, neurological function. Gotcha. I don't know that it can kill you, but it can affect your brain. Is that one of the ones that doesn't go away? Or does syphilis get cured by, like, penicillin? I've never had it. Jake, can you answer this? 
You know, it does go away. Good to know. How on its own? Yep. If you eat like around forty oranges a day, you probably <laughs> get rid of it probably in a week. It's like I'm stepping up my fiber intake. <laughs> so I mentioned that he bailed and he ended up in Saudi Arabia in 1989. He gets a little antsy, so he tries to go back. He flies from Saudi Arabia to Zaire, gets to Zaire Airport, and they're like, "Edie, can't be here, man." Like, so he's been in Saudi Arabia for a decade now. He has, yeah. Wow, and is living he the a life. Fake mustache, or is he like? Is he disguised <laughs> yeah. up? He did. Well, he gave a fake name. I don't know if he's physically disguised, but he did give a fake name. Still to take wearing the, the, the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson. <Yeah. laughs> like, and this is my wife, Oprah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, uh, Ian Amin. <laughs> <laughs> but they briefly detained him at the airport. They were like, they call Saudi Arabia. They're like, I mean, can you please come get this fucking guy? <laughs> Saudi Arabia lets him back in And that's where he spends the rest of his days uh, Really? Can you please hold his hand for what I'm about to oh, tell you? Oh dear god Shit. In 2003, Idi Amin passes away Oh no How? Broken heart Damn it Broken heart that was shot through a thousand times by Saudi Arabian bullets <laughs> 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 He just couldn't put it back Andrew together He just broke his heart one by one Broken heart and kidney failure, Jake Oh, uh, okay. I, and I, the kidney failure could have been a result of uh, syphilis, or no, that doesn't affect. I don't know. Okay. I'll have to learn more about syphilis. Well, oranges don't prevent kidney failure, it sounds like. Um, so he was in Saudi Arabia for over 20 years. Yeah, 1979 to 2003, yeah. Wow. Well, Except for that one time, yeah. time he went to Zaire and they turned him away. Yeah. Yeah, and that was probably just the right one, away. one day, right? right yeah. And they yeah. turned him away. They weren't like, ah, you're coming with us. You're under arrest. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. uh, is Zaire a city or a country? It's it's a country. It's now known as the uh, Republic of Congo. Okay. Okay. Um, so pretty much anywhere that he wanted to go in Africa that he was going to get turned away from. That's a good question. I don't know if he's persona non grata everywhere. Uh, but that's the one place that he tried and right. then was like, fuck it. Yeah. Just, just go back hungry. to <laughs> I mean, yeah. if he was living the life in Saudi Arabia, you know. He was, man. Well I mean, finish up there. I know he had is that, a. Is that what I think it is, Jeff? Is that what I think it is? Can you scroll up so I can see that is wiener too? Syphilis? I want to see it, Jeff, please. So his penis is on Wikipedia. Whose? Is that Edia Means? That's what a syphilis just, looks like on a penis? That's eating the meat. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you just Googled Whoa. Wikipedia and syphilis, and it showed you a, a syphil dick? Jeff, can it kill you, does it say? There have been 107,000 people that have died. Oh, my God. 107,000 people that have died. Uh, Yikes. Okay. I, yeah, you don't need to keep over the penis. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure you are. Sure. Why, like, why don't you read it lower on the screen, maybe? <laughs> why, your jeans on fire, Jeff? <laughs> are those feet? What are those? Oh, that's no, either, man. maybe that's 10 dicks. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a menorah. How did I get it's it? an acapella group. <laughs> <laughs> the 10 dicks. <laughs> it's penitonics. Whoa, that's syphilis on the back? Whoa, that you looks You got to be careful who you do a Romeo circle with these days. It's true. Could end up getting burned. Yeah, when he was in Saudi Arabia, he had a nice life. He had a uh, monthly allowance. The fuck? Whoa, that guy's That's fucked up, sloth Jeff. Sloth from fucking Goonies. Yeah, that looks like something from oh, Clown no. Hotel. That means Sloth gave Chunk syphilis. Oh, oh God. no, Sloth loved Because you know he was butt fucking that boy by the ears the yeah, second they got We to know place. that. As soon Mike. as he got the rocky road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he got the rocky load, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Why are pebbles coming out? <laughs> <laughs> the kidney stone. Hey, yeah. hey, I'm by <laughs> love, love, chunk. Jake, that was really good. Thank dude. you. I, I look like that every morning <laughs> when I try to unlock my iPhone. <laughs> there was an article that I read from a Tanzanian general, which which described the uh, overtaking Idi Amin's command post. And there were rumors that uh, he would keep he- uh, heads in his refrigerator. Jesus. People were just like, come on, man. Like, we know he's a fucked up dude, but that's too much. He's like, I can confirm that when we looked in his refrigerator at his command post, there were two severed heads in there. Bro, I mean, at least keep an open box of baking soda in there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like heads in here. 
There's an open meatloaf. Was there, <laughs> was there two fridges or was there, was there one fridge? One fridge, two heads. <laughs> he only had one fucking fridge. Because oh, I could see that would be like a prank fridge for like any of your guests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, get, make yourself comfortable. There's plenty of drinks in the fridge. And oh, maybe it's it. in the uh, crisper drawer. <laughs> There's severed penises in this drawer. <laughs> Just stacked up like carrots. Oh, wait, there is a pack of hot dogs at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one other neat thing that this uh, Tanzanian general mentioned about the command post, he says, in the stairs leading upstairs, um, leading to the second floor, <laughs> he said there were... Um, <laughs> You're not getting away with that one. <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah, give him the helmet. Yeah, get that on. Give him the helmet and put the hat on top of the helmet. <laughs> the captain's hat on top of the head of helmet. <laughs> Jake Tutu. You do know how some stairs go downstairs, though, right? <laughs> that is a good point. So, yeah. We're so, in going the, upstairs to the, up, the, up the stairs. Jake, in the stairs going upstairs, um, there were pictures of other dictators. <laughs> For real? Yeah. Oh, like family photos? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> All like JC Penny. The Photoshop. Hall of Presidents. <laughs> Glamour shots. Having a bunch of them just all pose. <laughs> Legs up. A collage. They had to cut them out and glue them, though. It's pre Photoshop. So, in a nutshell, that's our friend Edie. I mean, wow. Well, happy birthday and most certainly hell yeah. to Edie. I mean, yes. Uh, what a bad guy, but pure of heart, as you would say. I would. <laughs> um, where did you purchase the hat? The Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be willing to try to return that to the Mummer's store on Columbus Ave? <laughs> I don't associate with those people. Um, you have to do the classic uh, posture and keep your posture straight like a, like a woman who was not yet Deflowered. learned. Jesus. <laughs> there you go. This is incredible. Just stay still. Ooh, I'm like one of those African ladies that carries laundry around. This is exactly like they that. don't yeah. carry laundry. There. Isn't it just like bananas and stuff? But and they won that basket. <laughs> no, no, I did Jake. not mean that. In a, stop. What the fuck? No, man? Jake. No, it's like baskets of fruit and stuff. Yeah, Jake. They they. No, don't. That's South America. That's Chiquita Banana Lady. Well, I am uneducated. I am dumb. I did not mean that just in like, a way. Just that, like most racists. No, most bigots. You don't know the first thing about fucking laundry. I do all the laundry. I you bet do you the do. Laundry? How do you carry it? <sighs> carry it on my hip. Just like that. Mm. And then I put the bananas on my head. Unfucking real. <laughs> Jake, I don't see the appeal of that banana stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come on this podcast yeah. and was... make disgusting African generalizations. I'm st- I was not trying to African do that. African general is <gasps> Oh, my God. Don't knock the hat off. Yeah. Don't get overly excited <laughs> oh about God. a joke you didn't yeah. even realize you oh said. God, I, I feel thought- like I'm levitating right now. <laughs> general. <laughs> That's Doogie- floating. Doogie McTutu? McTata? Doogie Matata. Yes, General I, Doogie Matata. I apologize Doogie for slipping. I'm, I'm sorry. At ease. Thank you. I always am. <laughs> Did I th- remember when I mentioned the crocodile? Did I mention his- what his name was? No. No. His name was Osama. Was he named after anyone specific? Yeah, President Barack Osama. Yeah, the fucking 9-11 murderer. What year was the gator from, though? Uh, Osama bin Laden had already risen to prominence at that point? No, he was named Osama after the attacks. Oh, okay. Who named him? The people that bought him and bred him? Or was he already named by... Fucking Elvis Mututu. I don't. I don't oh, know. Okay, man. he's got to keep wait, good posture. Wait, so any no, no. fucking decent question I give him, no, is Osama, automatically slapped down. The, the gator would have, you said was seventy five years old. So a crocodile, anything, Jake. Yes. Oh, sorry, crocodile. That's right. It's the he was seventy five when he was caught. So seventy five when he was caught. That means Osama bin Laden was probably named after the crocodile. That's what we're talking I about. I don't believe the crocodile was named at the time of the September eleventh attacks. I'll tell you what, was though, the crocodile. Practicing any type of, Never mind That's a terrible question Was he getting his pilot's license Is what he wants to know <laughs> I will tell you this though Osama yeah. bin Biden. 
they did say they would say before he would eat one of those disabled people. He would yell alligator Akbar. <laughs> Which of course weird thing for a croc to say. Uh, you're right. Yeah. He would yell ala croc bar. Now we're talking. All right. <laughs> now we are getting there. Do it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What do you think they get in heaven? 72 disabled people. Not bananas, Jake. <laughs> not bananas. I did not mean to make a... I wasn't doing that. Uh, 72 severed penises. All right, cool. That's what it goes in the uh, basket on your head. <laughs> How else were they getting there? Yeah, they were not flushing those things yeah. down the toilet. Those are heaven laborers. Wow. <laughs> wow, he killed 80 people from just one village, the crocodile. And hey, look at the size of that fucker. That's Jesus Christ, truck. that's like Lake Placid. Yeah. Oh, my you God. Seen that movie, Mike? Uh, I'm aware of it. And looking at this uh, crocodile, I'll tell you right now, I'm not Lake Placid. That thing's got me rock hard, brother. <laughs> Crock hard. <laughs> yeah, I think he might be funnier when he can't move his neck. <laughs> the kumquat hour has arrived. It is. It's upon us. And they are ripe tonight. <laughs> oh, man. Got a general's hat and a dunce cap. It, he was You're making a political statement right now. <laughs> I believe these people when they say that he was possessed by Satan because this croc, he just wouldn't eat shit that was in the water. People said he would deliberately tip over boats to get people in the water. My Whoa. God. I thought you were still talking about the stinker, but now I think the croc is the stinker, now that I'm thinking of it. Damn, that is a big uh, crocodile. Caught in oh, caught in 2005. Okay, so that is... Near Disney World. Four years after the attacks. It is, yeah. Okay, now it's starting to add up. Okay. But wait. <laughs> they call this Tower One. Tower he he two. found that in Saudi Arabia. No, no. Where did he find the croc? <laughs> that you, croc was found in Uganda. It had nothing to do with uh, Idi Amin. He was already out of town. Wait, they so say what? all right. So he would feed people to, to the croc. He was a troublesome croc for a while. They assumed that he was a bad croc that was eating people. That was benefiting from Idi Amin dumping people in these yeah. waterways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to be superhuman because of his. Uh, Lunch schedule from EDME. Yeah. He killed 83 people from 91 to 75. Whoa, gotcha. man. And then they uh, they pulled him out and rewarded is- him by letting him get <laughs> fucked multiple times a day. Dude, he legit is a, this croc is a stinker. Yeah. Now yeah we're going to have to do a different episode on him. Yeah, not, now he's fucking 95 years old getting croc head. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, too much teeth, bitch. Come on. <laughs> Come on, get your hand on it. Get that little hand up there. Give it the death roll. Give it that death roll. What'd that death roll do? Yeah, you think when he comes, he does the death roll? <laughs> oh, I'm going to fucking roll. Oh, my God. Did you roll yet? Oh, my God. You want to roll together? Uh, yeah, definitely roll. I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll. It's going to roll. Did you laugh his hat off? Did you do that? <laughs> Oh, I fucking rolled. <laughs> I rolled so hard. <laughs> Babe, did you roll? Yeah. Could you go get the towel? <laughs> Wait, I still have one sock on. <laughs> you can use that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Ooh, Gustave, baby. is that another one? Or is it? Oh, oh is this one God. still that large? Was he a Nile uh, crocodile as well? This motherfucker puts the Nile in Nihilator. <laughs> wow. <coughs> He's still out there? Yo, we gotta, we gotta get Gustav. Where is he? What country? Oh. Burundi. Burundi. Oh, I'm not going there. Yeah, to, <laughs> yeah the Grundle. Is that a country? Where's Brundy? It is. Oh, God, it's... 
It sounds like a made-up country from a Tyler Perry movie. Near Congo. Oh, okay. Near How far does that damn river go? It's a long river. They say that's why they say denial is not just a river in Egypt. That's why they say that. Oh my god! Because it's in other countries. Other countries and it has nothing to do with exactly the words. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo, man, we are pretty stupid tonight. Oh, we are cooking. Uh, would you fellas ever like to go to Africa? Um, I th- yeah, I would. I'd like to see the pyramids. Maybe go to Morocco. Morocco Ooh, and Egypt, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, J- Johannesburg might be cool in the uh, rich area. Is Casablanca in Morocco? I think so. I, I've always wanted to visit there ever since I saw the movie. Yeah. That movie makes me think of falling in love, Jake. Uh, you know what? Me too, Mike. The movie Casablanca takes place there? Yeah. Really? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. It wasn't filmed there, right? <laughs> that's a whole... <laughs> that's, was that Gone with the Wind? I don't... Sound of Music, one of those? I think that's Gone with the Wind. Is is Casablanca that this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship? That's that him and Sam. <laughs> oh, here's looking at you, kid. That's... Which... No, it's, was... it's also this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship, oh, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's looking at you, kid. Was a uh, rewrite by the actor. Who was the actor? Was that Cary Grant, or was that that was that was, uh, Bo, was that no, Bogart? That was Humphrey Bogart. Mike McQueary when he looked in the mirror, saw the cheek boy in the Penn State showers. He said, "Here's looking at you, kid." <laughs> the cheek boy, and uh, and then Jerry Sandusky he said, "Casa spank you." That's what his house is called. <laughs> yeah, we're all Very eating hard. 40 kumquats a day right now. <laughs> yeah, I like to think of love when I watch that movie, Jake. They play it once a summer at my favorite theater. They play what? Gone with the Wind or Casablanca? Casablanca. I will never watch a movie that was filmed before 1968. That's I usually crazy. don't like them. I liked... Um, you ever see Sunset Boulevard? I watched that this year. What year is it from? Oh, Christ. It's like early Probably 70s, 40s. right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, it's okay. old as shit, yeah. What am I thinking? I'm thinking American Graffiti. Totally different. By uh, George Lucas? Is that by George Lucas? American Graffiti with uh, Ron Howard? Yeah. Starts at the drive-in? Yep. Yeah. Yes, I believe that is a George Lucas movie. Wow. I think so. Jake Listeners, says, don't be startled yes, at no, home. No, no, it's no, just no. the Amazon. This is not bad. Yeah, you know, that's, man. A, that's a new era. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's fitted. <laughs> My God, it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're stanzas. They're nice. <laughs> Jake, you look like a toy soldier, brother. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You you look like a nutcracker is what you look like. Yeah. Be cracking them nuts with this hat on. John, put your balls in his mouth. That. I was going to squeeze his nuts and crack them. <laughs> oh, please. Would you guys let me squeeze your nuts so hard that they pop? I'll tell you what. Why don't you... <laughs> Jake, why don't we stand side by side and uh, John will squeeze each of our balls with equal, equal strength uh-huh. in it's each definitely hand. Definitely equal. And we got to see who can take it the longest. No. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. I'm not doing that. <laughs> You guys are going nowhere near my balls. I'm sorry. <coughs> Mike, I thought you had them. I do I have really him. thought you had them. <laughs> Jake, try a different approach for the podcast. It's okay. I'm a limo driver. Jake, for That's the podcast. Like. For the podcast. I love this podcast, but I we're not grabbing my balls. I'll tell you what, John. There's no we about it. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no mouse in my pocket I can assure you <laughs> Alright John why don't we compromise uh, Why don't you put one of my balls in each hand <laughs> <laughs> Okay now we're getting somewhere <laughs> And Jake you scream when you think I've had enough <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a deal That's a deal right there <laughs> Better not scream <laughs> I'm gonna do the Blair Witch thing, just stand in the corner and turn around. I am so scared right now. <laughs> I'm so fucking horny. Oh man, speaking of horned up, man, bro, I can't. 
Mm-hmm. Keep my hands off this letter. Come on, man. That thing is... Jody Arias herself wrote this. If you're watching this on Patreon, you are only a few days away from the unveiling of the letter from Jody Arias. She has written us back. I mean, the self-restraint to not open this right now. You impressed me so much. Thank you. Yeah, I, I thought it was get for, for sure a week from now. I'm... <clears throat> I can't tell you what I'm going to do this envelope next month. It's like having a winning lottery ticket and not cashing it in. Oh, I think we all have a good idea of what you're going to do inside that envelope (laughs) after the letter is removed. (laughs) Oh, my God, man. It's right here. I'm surprised you don't frame it, throw up on the corkboard when we're done. I might. Yeah. I I, I can't imagine what she's going to say in this. I think it's going to be very surface level, but a nice first step. A little playful joke here and there. You're right. I mean, I what I'm I'm gathering all that just from the penmanship alone. Mm-hmm. It seems like a, a joyful mm-hmm. writing, like an eighth grade love letter. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. when's yeah? Uh, when's the last time each of you has written a love letter? <laughs> written? Uh. Oh, the crocodile is upon us. <laughs> um, Your stomach? I guess never. Really? Man. You've never written something nice? <clears throat> or, I, was like, I was like Stan in high school. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, bitch. I wrote what you ain't calling. <laughs> 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 uh, dude, I'll never, I'll never forget. Uh, fuck, I should have. Uh, I went in fifth grade. I really liked this girl, so I wrote her a love note. I was like, hey, I really like you, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Admitted all my feelings. And this bitch never had a book bag. She was poor, like most of us in my grade. <laughs> and she would just carry around. I'm not, She'd carry around everything in a shoebox. What? She didn't have a book bag. She'd carry a shoebox, and all her books would be in the book. So what the one fuck, day she Jake? got up to go to the bathroom. She was in my homeroom. I opened the shoebox, and I just dropped my note in. And then <laughs> never heard from her again. <laughs> she never came back to class? No. No, no, no. She came back to class. She, I, she never acknowledged she it. She never acknowledged a note. Oh, <laughs> Recently no. sent me a friend request, though. <gasps> but uh, Yeah, ask yeah. her how that fucking shoebox backpack's yeah. working these days, you <laughs> fucking poor bitch. I'll bet you're still poor. <laughs> I'll bet yeah. your kid's carrying his books around in a fucking milk crate that you stole from Wawa. Yeah, I'll bet your fucking laptop's in a shoebox now, you fucking dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got a fucking Vizio TV, you bitch. <laughs> Jake, was this a Catholic school? This was a public school. Okay. Yeah, this was a public middle school. What the fuck, yeah. man? I mean, that is depressing because one of those teachers should have just been like... Dude, I mean, everybody has an extra backpack. Yeah. You know? I think she also preferred it. Or that's what she said. She preferred it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like... No. How do you prefer carrying a shoebox... Filled with books. Dude, it's got to be... I prefer dead teeth and smelling like shit every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something we like. <laughs> Could you imagine being that poor and thinking about suicide every day and having to stare at a box that says, just do it? <laughs> <laughs> and then to have the gall not to acknowledge the love note. The person who's going to accept you for as you are. Jake, you got to tell us. What did you write in this fucking note? I mean, I think I just said, like, how much I had a crush on her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, Robin never responded. I want to eat that box. <laughs> Girl, what you got in that box? This ain't the only thing I'm trying to slip in that box, bitch. I'm trying to sneak in that box, girl. <laughs> but, yeah, I do. I'll write a, I do still write love notes mm. a lot. Like to who? To my wife. (laughs) What the fuck for? Ah, dude, just like you know. You already got her, bro. I I gotta keep. Trust me, I gotta keep her on the hook. Now you write to mistresses. (laughs) Ah. Oh, Jody. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's one thing that I realized today is um, I haven't written my wife a love letter in a while. Okay. I have to now. Yeah, you. Yes, you do. You have to mail it? Yeah. <laughs> and you have to put your P.O. B- box as a return address. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. Still check it once a week. <laughs> Damn, I won't mind checking her P.U. box. <laughs> it's going to be my first line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
I'm glad oh. we hung in here for the come out. That was worth it. That was worth it. We're referring to you. P.U. Box 69. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Over at the postal orifice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> Oh boy Ladies and gentlemen If you live in America The country we all love mm. Please consider coming to the capital of Texas mm. January 26, 27 I will be at Cap City At the Red Room Headlining On the motherfucking road I'm gonna have Sean Gardini there with me mm. To nice. come catch a great fucking comedy show baby That's awesome baby It'll be very fun. I'm excited. And I'll be in Indianapolis in March, March 22nd and 23rd. Also, there's going to be some basketball action. Whoa. Some March Madness action happening in town that, that weekend. So Everywhere there's March Madness. I know they're doing it all over the place. And it, uh, seems no, I'm talking about at the basketball venue and at Helium. True. Yeah, we're going to get the madness in the, March, in the month of March. <laughs> Somebody else talk. <laughs> <laughs> Please finish your thought, John. <laughs> I finished it a while ago. I'm actually all stuffed. Can we agree on this? Why don't we each write, write our wives a love letter this week? And then mail it. Yeah, you can mail it. It would be nice for her to receive a mail. And then we'll um, instead of us killing each other's <laughs> wives, we write each other's wives a love letter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But sign from each other. Ooh, Jake, I like that. Uh, no, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what the, oh, what I want to say is, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, it's been a while since I wrote my wife a love letter. Um, I did recently get her a cameo though that I'm waiting on, which is what I was just checking. Cause I ordered it last night. Do you know the, um, wait, is this going to spoil it if she watches this? I'll make sure uh, if you're watching this right now, Jamie, uh, go kick rock somewhere. Earmuffs. But, but, um, yeah, we both like this. We both laugh at this girl with Tourette's on the internet. <gasps> Yeah, that girl's really funny. Oh, so yeah, fucking yeah. funny, man. And uh, she does cameos. Oh, cool. So I got my wife one, and I asked her just to tell my wife that I love her, I'm very proud of her, and I and I think this is going to be the best year of her life. Ruben ass head. <laughs> <laughs> Wind it up. <laughs> Butter your own biscuit, fat ass. Little baby penis. <laughs> uh, dude, she's definitely faking it. And yeah. no one's ever faked it dude, better, dude. High level faking, man. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, so. <laughs> But I, I'll write her a new one though. Okay. You want me to write love love letters to each of you? No, but something tells me you're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Jake, what's new with you? Oh man, you're bringing back some memories. In high school, uh, went to a Catholic high school. We did something called a uh, Kairos. What's up? It translates to God's time. And uh, you stay at a, a monastery. Is that what it is yeah. where all the priests live? You guys all go out there for a weekend. and uh, they, they fill you with God's slime? <laughs> they fill you with God's slime, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Who put the, all this God slime in the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I just remember they surprised you with a bunch of letters from like your parents yes. and all that kind of shit and like friends and loved ones and you're just like oh my god you just get hit with it hard yeah yeah we did that uh senior retreat yeah, yeah where, where was that Jeff? Malvern. Malvern? Malvern Malvern it felt like it was you know hundreds of miles away yeah did, it, did you spend the night there too yeah, it was like a weekend I think we went on a Friday night we came home on a Sunday I don't think we did that. But it was yeah. a similar experience. Um, yeah, we would go the first night, which is very nice. They just talk about, you know, how it's been a nice four years with us. Yeah. And then uh, we got to watch Shawshank Redemption. Uh, really? Yeah, and it was like, this was 1996, and the movie just fucking came That's out. That's awesome. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, I, I think a big part of why I love that movie so much was because of the emotional attachment yeah. to that moment. But speaking to your letter point, yeah, one of the letters I got was from my dad. And it was very sweet because my dad was like speaking in the letter away in a way that he doesn't speak. 
Yeah. And he mentioned that he loved me in the letter, which was very nice because, like, he would sooner cut his own dick off and feed it to me than tell me he loves me now. But because of that letter, I know that he does. Some yeah. things are that's easier nice. to write. Than and some to things say. are easier to yeah. suck. So that's why I suck on that letter every night. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how I got ink poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you remember who all your letters were from? I remember, like, the one from my uh, mom and dad. And, of course, it was like, it got me good. So each night had a theme. And I think, like, when you get all the letters, it was like, uh, I think they called it, like, Cry the Second or something like that. They had, like, they had an action for each day. They're like, you're going to get hit with something today. But, with yeah. a paddle <laughs> A letter and a paddle <laughs> They smacked you while you were in the shower yeah, yeah But I remember it was like It was at a time like my I think my grandfather just passed away Oh I'm sorry And uh, my cousin had just passed away Like all within like a Within a year So like everything got brought up in the letter oh. You just look You just start blubbering in front of everybody Just like oh, I got it. Oh. Yeah it's like Yeah Not really the best no. place for it To read it out loud <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Did you have anything like that, John? We did the senior retreat thing with letters, but I think it was just from your parents. Maybe just like fa other family members, but not from like other friends. Was it like friends that were in I your think class? Some people could be friends, but they tried to make it mostly family. Uh -huh. Yeah, but if you had like a shitty family, they were like, "You can allow a friend letter here." Yeah. 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 Uh, to that point, do you think Shoebox Girl got any letters? You know, she went to public high school, so I have no idea. She, she didn't have a good from... track record of reading letters, from what I hear. <laughs> Maybe she couldn't read. Maybe she was so fucking poor and stupid she couldn't oh read, and she was embarrassed. See, what if the manager Maybe. from Foot Locker sent her a letter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, your fucking, your kids are still on layaway. <laughs> <laughs> They're cheap. That's the joke. <laughs> yeah. The joke is that they had to put some cheap shit on layaway. <laughs> um, Jake, how does she look now? Who's that? Yeah, she requested that? you, right? She looks okay. Yeah. She got she I mean, she squirted out any fucking little shifts, any little I runts. I didn't even dive that far. Oh, bro, bring it up now. Let's I check said, her out. I said ignore. What? Yeah. Why? Because I don't need that. Uh, I got come all, on, man. I got all the love of oh, my life. Oh my. God. God, if your fucking wife founds out a girl you wrote a letter to in fourth I, no, grade, dude, it's going to be a problem. I mean, I got now I got Jody in my <laughs> life, too. You know, I only have so much bandwidth. When it Jake. rains, it pours, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, tell me what this girl's name I, is. I honestly, I don't know what it is. You either stay inside or you put on a poncho and you go out there and get wet, dude. <laughs> I'll look. No, yeah, I'll, I'll look get, and see if it shows up. Wet. Text it to me. You don't have to tell I, no, me. No, I, I don't know. If uh, I see her now, I'll be able to tell... Uh, if I mean, she I was a uh, a one to a ten as a child, <laughs> <laughs> that's what. Well, actually, I would say, are you Mike is able to tell they're a one to a ten as a child, being a beauty pageant judge and all. Yeah, you are well versed. I did go to a beauty pageant and um in inappropriate uh, travels abroad it wasn't my choice. See if she shows up here. How old were you? You were a teenager. <laughs> so unfortunately, I was an adult your choice. <laughs> I, well, I knew what we were going there for. You were taking a vacation no matter which way it was coming. Right, and I yeah. could drink for the first time yeah. legally. That was cool. your first time? No, I mean, I was I was boozing. But yeah. My first time legally. Legally, and Brother. did you get to booze with family? Oh, God, yeah. Really? Uh, it was, I think that was the only time I drank with my dad. <gasps> and he didn't say like, hey, since we did it there, we no. can also have a beer at home when we get back? No. He, I don't think he really enjoyed drinking. He just did it because it was something to do with me. Nice. It was very nice of him. But, uh. Yeah, I, I bought Molson Triple X. I knew you were gonna have Molson. Nice. And I got so fucking sick, man. Triple X is like uh, I like, forget what the alcohol like Bud he or was. Bud Ice kind of probably. Yeah, it wasn't good. I just got mm -hmm. it because it looked nasty. Yeah, and it's you probably are in the mode of like drink the strongest shit you yeah. can so you can get fucked up yeah. cheap for quick. Oh, right. I like getting fucked up. Yeah, cheap me for too, quick. Me I got too. so fucked up. Uh, New Year's Eve. What'd you drink? Did you? Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of people are like, you driving home? And I'm like, yeah, I'll be good. <laughs> well, I'll Jesus, be good. Jake. <laughs> I'll be good. I'll be this good. This is going to be on the internet. No, I mean, I wasn't dr drunk driving. I waited till 5.30 in the morning before I left. To stop drinking oh, and leave. Jesus Christ. Yeah, really? I, I stopped, that late? I stopped <clears throat> drinking probably, yeah. I, God I, damn. I stopped drinking probably at like 
one forty five, two o'clock. Nice. How was it? Good party? Good hang? Yeah, well, I mean, not I, everyone else had a great time. You stayed till five in the morning. Woo wee, dude. Yeah. Did you get McDonald's breakfast on the way home? <laughs> I did not. You stupid fuck. I, when are you gonna <laughs> learn? When are you gonna <laughs> fucking learn, dude? I don't even know if this one opens at five. I think it opens at six. <sighs> so wait in the fucking home. parking lot. Bop yeah. your little wiener off. But then my wife's going to hear me come in the door, you know? Oh, my she's God. Gonna, she's going to hear me. She's going to think you're writing love letters to poor girls. This was in fifth grade. You wrote a letter to Ronald McDonald and you wrote a letter to me? <laughs> Who's Darla? <laughs> Who's Don Bernice? <laughs> yeah, no. Be honest with me. Who's Don Bernice prettier than me? <laughs> <laughs> Show us the woman. Yeah, I found please. the person, and we are friends. Yeah. Can you just pass the phone down so we can see? Yeah. I hit, promise you, I won't do anything. You did accept with. the friendship now? I did accept the friendship. Yeah. At midnight, you fucking you pervert. pervert. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't accept it now. I accepted it when I think when it was sent. Let's go, oh, man. Said, man make with ignore. it. Jesus Christ. He's fucking this lady. I know he is. No, I'm not. No, no, I'm, dude. It's, I'm, I don't want to do this. Profile yeah, pic. We're not showing it to the camera. Don't, yeah, you're We're not showing it to the camera. We just want to see that. what got you hard in fourth grade. No, no, it's <laughs> dude. Yeah. Let us see what made that's your a profile fourth grade. picture. That's the profile picture. Swipe. Nice looking lady. Let me Swipe. see your phone. Swipe. You can only see her fucking yeah. eyeball. I know. Mike. I know. She's hiding a lot. She's hiding a lot. Not bad. Let's yeah. go. I can't see. Let me. Let's I go. swear to God. All right. He's he's got his eye surgery. Let's go. Keep swiping. Don't be liking these. Okay. She's pretty identical to what what she was in fifth grade, Mike. So, I am going no, to send I her yeah, a like friend I said, request. I, you asked for a judgment. Did you just look up the fucking name? <laughs> you fucking dick. Dude, you sly dog. <laughs> My guy. <laughs> fucking A, dude. Jeez. I can't believe dirty, her name dude. is actually Don Bernice. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. He's typing. He Please is sending her a message. Stop. I'm not going to do anything, Jake. I just want to see more pics. Public? Are they public? Oh, Just the one Jake showed us. Guys, it was... I said it was fifth grade. Engaged to Jake Matera. What the <laughs> fuck, Jake? There's two Jake Materas? Yeah, that's crazy. That's my McBuddy account. McBurner account. <laughs> I don't find her attractive. Now. Oh. Hey, did you have a new bumper sticker on the back of your car that said, <laughs> Mormons get to fuck all the pussies? <laughs> Was that your car? <laughs> that was my car. Or was that the Pontiac Aztec that rammed me in the McDonald's parking lot? Still following me. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, did that really happen? No. Oh, <laughs> Christ. Wouldn't tell you that. Oh, man. Great. Now you got me horny for hoagies. Oh, my God. How'd the hoagie come up? I, I just re-downloaded Facebook, and it's my hoagie Just group. now to do that? Yes. Dude. Next level fucking... Trying to get your buddy divorced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, Jake. Jake, I'm glad you uh, raised your expectations. <laughs> I am too. Jake, you, you got balls, brother. Why? I know. I mean, that's ballsy to fucking write a letter and sneak it in the shoebox. <clears throat> oh, in f- fifth grade. I mean, you always had balls. Shot. I do got balls. You got balls early. You got early balls. I got early balls. <laughs> you got early onset balls. <laughs> got them early balls. Yeah, you and me, brother. Only boo. <laughs> you can't even pronounce your R's. This bitch has got you fucking fucked up, Jake. <laughs> I was wondering if you're not doing anything uh, Friday. We could go to Dairy Queen. Jesus Christ. Maybe we can go to the fire hall dance. Have you ever had Wed Robin? Because you got me red and throbbing. <laughs> All right. We we got a nice little button on the episode now. <laughs> That's the name of the episode, Red Throbbing. <laughs> Come. Jake, man. I'll tell you, brother. You you Perfect. are like a present that we continually unwrap. Mm-hmm. I, that's how I describe you, Mike. Thank you, buddy. Yes. But you are... You are there are so many layers to you. You are like one of those glacier posters. There's so much under the surface. Yeah. And I can't wait. I sure wish half of me would fall off right about now. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all good stuff. 
Yeah. You're getting to something under there. I like it all. I, I hate it. <laughs> I love it all. Before we end, let me just see what I look like in the hat. Yeah, of course. Whoa. Looks like there's a lot of lawbreakers here. <laughs> <laughs> Which guy from Cheap Trick? John Lennon? <laughs> I feel like I look like a beetle. You're Rick something? Uh, I have a few good special men. <laughs> um, Rick O'Neill? Is that it? Does this Rick fit your guys, does this fit your guys head? Yeah. I, I got, you got, y'all got peanut heads, for real. That I mean, was a tight, doesn't fit you? tight fit. It does not fit Greg, me. Greg Nielsen? Rick Nielsen. Yeah, John, I'm a seven and three eighths fitted. I'm a seven and a half, so you're just under me. Mm-hmm. But this makes all the difference. I'm me. above you, but in a hat size, I am smaller. Okay. That's hurtful. <laughs> hurtful in a couple ways. Um, did you order this as your fitted size? Did it come in sizes like that? I think you could get small, medium, large, or extra large. So you went medium as well as your penis. <laughs> well, say it to my face. Don't put it in my shoebox. <laughs> What the fuck am I getting dragged into this for? It's a YouTube kind of thing happening right now. What's going on in here? It's hurting me. Yeah, it, <laughs> that was I couldn't even lift it off your head. I know it's stuck. Try to get it off. It's a goddamn sword in Jesus. the stone. Yeah. Look at that. I have the power, Excalibur. I, I probably already have a red mark on my forehead, don't I? You do. Yikes. You looked like you were driving a porn star's hearse in that hat. Drop and give me 20 <laughs> push pops. <laughs> so I would the do. fudge kind. <laughs> Jake, you, you definitely look like a rear admiral. Yeah, fuck, Thank dude. Thank you. I can't, I can't make us end the podcast if you're still dropping gold nuggets like rear admiral on this motherfucker. Jake, have you ever thought about driving a boat? No, why, Mike? I think you would be good. You ever watch Deadliest Catch? I have. You do look like a man who would stay up all night to make sure his boys were safe. What do they do all night? They crab. Yeah. Why does that make their boys safe, though? So he's looking out for them. He's watching. If there's waves coming, he gives uh, them a heads everybody's up. Everybody's up all night. Yeah, if one guy needs to be called the F word that you're not allowed to say anymore, you say it over the loudspeaker. Fish monster. Do they really say that? Do they bleep out the F word on there? I never heard the F word, but I have heard them bleep out curses. Okay. Uh, that's a job I would want. Curse bleeper for, <laughs> for, for discovery. For catch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to let the T on this one stay in. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just call him a fat? And they bleeped fat? <laughs> Uh, no, I would just make it sound like Mike Rowe was the one saying it. But I would like to be I a... I did just learn that. A Deli's Catch Fisherman. He was the narrator mm-hmm. of the show. He just told us that a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, it's yeah. that's really a great going to sleep show. Yeah, and it's pretty clear that we have reached the end of this <laughs> session. <if we're laughs> talking about the narrator, the deadliest catch for that's the all. second time in recent yeah. memory. Uh, how fitting is it that a man who narrates... The most popular fishing show is named Ro. I did this a couple of weeks ago, so I don't want to do it again. What? Mike Ro Penis. No. Mike Ro Penis. Mike Ro. Ro. Mike Ro. Ro, 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 your boat. You don't even remember me making that joke a couple but weeks ago? But I don't ago? see where penis fits into this. Mike Ro Penis. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Captain Steuben. Put the hat on even lower on him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. You did it, Mike. We did. We made it. Jake, what do you want to promote? Uh, just you follow me at Twitter, uh, at Jake Matera, on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Johnny Delco. J-O-N-N-Y-D-E-L-C-O. And you can find me in your bitch's sneaker box. <laughs> <laughs> That's like you fucking nerd. No, but um, <laughs> um, uh, when I'm not in your bitch's shoe box, I am... On the internet, selling books. Go to onperks.com. I'm picking one more person for the weekend with the rain train. That's awesome. And I'm going to do that. And you gonna, better live far away. Yeah, I'm kind of. I, I picked a winner on Tuesday, but the guy, a uh, very cool guy, lives in fucking uh, Connecticut. So he's going to drive a few hours. But I really want to fly somebody here. I want it to be 
an adventure for three days to Delco, PA. So I'm picking one more winner for the weekend with the rain train. I'm going to pick that on an episode in the coming weeks here on Little Stinkers. John's going to pick a random number from his random number generator. How are we going to get the generator into my house? Uh, we might have to open <laughs> up the back bay window here. Let us figure that out, though. But anybody who buys a book is eligible to be considered. And all entries up until the time when we get this generator up and running and into my house will be considered. But the weekend with the rain train, you'll get round trip airfare to uh, Philadelphia, PA. I live five minutes from the fucking airport. You're coming to Delco, Pennsylvania, home of me and Jake Matera. Uh, we're going to go to my favorite pizza place, which is Pika's Pizza in Upper Darby, PA. We're going to go to a Phillies game with Chris Wood and Ryan Shaner. We're going to have a special screening of MacGruber with my dear friend Tim Butterly. And we're going to go on a true crime tour with Jake Matera and John Del Calo and whatever oh. else these guys feel like doing. Listen, if there's something that... that strikes your fancy while we're out and about just let me know and we'll fucking do it but uh yeah one more lucky devil is going to win all that but on perks.com just buy a copy of my book everybody's eligible that goes for all forms of the book but man we had fun tonight we did and oh my god are you ordering a hoagie right now you fat piece of shit (laughs) what do you want me to say man (laughs) I've been checked out of this podcast for like 25 minutes. Let's see. What we got? We got a meatball. I'm going to do a combo with the soup and the meatball sandwich. Oh, that's a good combo. They're out of mashed potatoes. It's really throwing my whole fucking night off. Damn. I'm sorry. They're out of mashed potatoes. They come in a fucking bag. I got to tell them about the letter. Oh, yeah. So listen. Oh, I'm sorry. If, if you're watching this on Patreon, you already have access to the episode where we're opening up this letter. It'll be happening... On Wednesday, January 10th. If they're not watching it on Patreon, then the letter's already been opened. Yeah, but you can go to patreon.com slash little stinkers to watch the episode mm-hmm. where we open this bitch. It's not open as of this recording, but patrons are going to get to see us through this live because patrons helped us write this letter to the lovely Jody Arias. Do you happen to have a, a proper letter opener? I'll buy one. I have one. I'll look for it and I'll bring it. If it's you cool. can find it, let me know. If you can't, let me know and I'll get one. Cool. But, yeah, we're going to pop this bad boy open on Wednesday, January 10th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to read it out loud for all of our patrons. I can just see with the way the light is hitting this paper inside that this lady was writing. Yeah. She was writing her little took us off. And that could have been her that wrote that on the front. What do you mean? You know, that could that could be her handwriting. Oh, she wrote this. This is a lady's handwriting. Yes. Yes, and uh, we all know she's the only lady in that prison. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Jeff, uh, can you can I give this to Jeff why, to the camera? Yes. Why would another woman write all of Jody Arias' information? She probably has a bunch of women holding her fucking pockets in there, dude. There's no way that a masculine woman wrote that. No. No. Well, we didn't say masculine woman. But she would because she's a very... I'm sure she wrote it. I'm positive. Jake's the, the instigator. He's the hater. I, mm. I ain't no hater. He's the alligator. I'm a crocodile. All right. Well, see you in a while, crocodile. Shit, dude. We love you guys. And, uh, (laughs) yeah. Oh, my God. One more for the road. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Uh, you can watch all that on patreon.com slash little snickers. Join us. And, uh, all right. Love you guys. And we'll see you next time for the next edition of Dictator Month. Dictator January. Speaking of dictators, I'm getting hungry for some (laughs) potato shaped penises. Dictator in (laughs) the coldest month of the year. All right, see you guys. Bye. Later. There's so much fucked up shit to get into.